of us are searching for something. There's a restlessness, an unhealed wound that afflicts all of humanity. We sometimes search vain for a simply impossible sense of wholeness, of peace. Every day millions seek happiness in pursuit of an ideal marriage partner or by living in an elite neighborhood with a model school system. They seek a sense of purpose by securing a more prestigious job with a bigger paycheck. They try to find contentment by acquiring their next purchase, a bigger house, a newer car, trendier technology, or by wearing more fashionable clothing. They look for self-esteem in thinner waistlines, bigger biceps, and fewer wrinkles. They search for fulfillment in their next relationship, believing that the next person they are involved with will surely fill the void they desperately try to fill. And in an attempt to satisfy a need they cannot even name, some disappear into a world of drugs, pornography, sex, and violence. We know that human beings are capable of rational thought. We can even instinctively distinguish between right and wrong. Yet no matter how hard we work to achieve a sense of wholeness and peace, we cannot eliminate the passionate and frustrated longing for something more. Perhaps many of you remember the rock and roll songwriter Bruce Springsteen, who in 1980 wrote a song called Everybody Has a Hungry Heart. And in today's readings, this hunger for something more, for something better, this desire for wholeness and joy, this craving for something missing in our lives, is characterized by a primal association of thirst and water. In today's first reading, the wandering Israelites are thirsty. They want water and demand that God give it to them. They, they demand from God is the Lord in our midst, or is he not? Notice that their thirst is not given to us as an example of faith. It's an example of their insistence that God meet their needs on their terms, not on his. Their thirst is not for God. It's simply for water. Likewise, in today's gospel, a Samaritan woman seeking water is confronted by Jesus who reminds her that though she has returned again and again to the same sister, she has never been satisfied. The well dug by her great patriarch Jacob provided an essential element of life for generations. But Jesus reminds her that there is a greater thirst in her, a thirst that extends beyond water from the well. For he knows that she seeks a life that reaches beyond the biological sphere of her existence. But unfortunately, this woman of Samaria continually reached out to men to satisfy her soul and give her a sense of meaning and purpose. And that didn't quite work out so well. The rhythm of drinking and become thirst, becoming thirsty again reminds us of the same deception we all struggle with. All attempts to gratify the cravings of body and soul with things finite and corruptible are defective. And when we return to these same sources repeatedly, we become tired, we become weary and frustrated. Both the first reading and the gospel reflect two dimensions of life. There's a distinction between biological life and the fullness of life of which man can only yearn. A thirst for water beyond raindrops falling from the sky is at the heart of today's third Sunday of Lent. Today's readings are notably relevant for our catechumens and catenates in our CIA. This morning we celebrate the second scrutiny, a rite intended to help enlighten these men and women by the word 
and by the grace of God. This right helps to deepen their faith from their initial attraction, which may have had many motivations. It moves them to an encounter with the living mystery of God. They, like the Samaritan woman in today's gospel, are challenged to ask four questions of themselves. How am I searching for wholeness, happiness, and joy? Does the emptiness I experience help me to recognize my soul's genuine desire? Do do I believe that Jesus is the Messiah and that he provides everything I need? And if I say I believe, then what? The Samaritan woman's response answers all of these questions. After encountering Jesus, she doesn't keep her joy to herself. She immediately shares the good news with others who are thirsty like her. When Jesus offers us a drink of living water, let us, like the woman at the well, also acknowledge and respond to the cries of others who are thirsty. How many of our family members or work colleagues thirst for living water. They, like us, thirst for closeness, for attention, and a listening ear from someone who cares. How often do we see a culture of indifference, emptiness, a frenetic pace of life, a rush to consume in our community? Give me a drink is a common cry heard in our society. Everyone yearns for what no stream or well can satisfy. Finally, let us acknowledge that thirst and yearning for something more is a gift. A gift that allows us to see that we alone cannot fill the space that resides in each one of our hearts. A thirst that earthly things cannot quench. Today's gospel offers living water to each of us gathered here today. And with the joy of having met our Lord in his word, let us offer ourselves to quench the thirst of others. My friends, when transformed by an ever-deepening encounter with Christ, let us offer meaning to someone else's life, not as masters, but as servants of the God who has first thirsted for us. A genuine encounter with Christ always results in us becoming changed persons, renewed persons, ready to be transforming agents ourselves. Persons more conscious of our own dignity, who can now see the dignity of others more clearly. And for that, let us thanks be to God.